what I would like actually to share with you is um, um, the work that um, I am doing now uh, in relation to, uh, to the women's rights. And it is um, uh, much broader than the work uh, in Iran. Uh, Oxfam Novib is an organization, as a development organization, a rights-based development organization, and is a part of an international confederation with uh, 16 and other organizations worldwide. We work in uh, more than 90 countries. Unfortunately, not in Iran, but in many, many other countries. So, when I was invited here, and the invitation was, um, so, um, uh, could you talk about the work of Oxfam in relation to the human rights of women and women's rights with specific focus on uh, Iranian women's rights? I thought, look, there are fantastic speakers today here and they are going to talk about specifically the situation in Iran. So let me uh, actually broaden the discussion and talk about the rest of the world. Uh, and with the question, what can we do actually to learn from each other and how can we combine and actually connect the different struggles going on in the, rest, in, in the whole world around the issue of uh, uh, women's rights. Um, and the main actually subject that I wanted to talk about is what do we see in the, uh, in the world is going on with religious fundamentalism or if you want religious conservatism what is going on and how it is impacting the rights of women um, what and first of all why do we see actually an increase in religious fundamentalism and religious uh, conservatism um, and it's very interesting because maybe in in a, in a way in some places, uh, we see a different trend than we see in Iran. And that's very interesting to realize, actually. The first is actually, worldwide, we are witnessing an increase in poverty and inequality, especially inequality. That's a really a huge problem, where we see everywhere. The uh, gap between the rich and, uh, and, and poor is widening and uh, we see that really millions of people are not uh, 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 benefiting from the economic growth in a lot of countries. And the impact of that is that the people understand that poverty is not a kind of, you know, uh, 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 something happening because it is very natural that it is happening. No, it is really seen as injustice. Uh, because at the same time, in a lot of societies, the people see that economic, economically, the, 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 the whole nation, or if you want, the country, is growing. But it is a few really benefiting, and a large number of people are not uh, uh, benefiting. I just visited Nigeria, a country really with huge, huge natural resources, with a lot of uh, uh, potential to be a very, very, very rich nation. And they call themselves also a really rich nation, but with poor people, because more than 70% of the people are living below the poverty line. And you see that that injustice is experienced by the people and they see that and then you see that you know, people uh, or groups like Boko Haram and the others, they increase and they, uh, they, they start actually to talk about the issue of poverty and injustice and use the religion to actually mobilize the people for that cause. So this poverty and inequality is a very, very strong uh, development which uh, actually makes um, um, uh, religion as a political uh, uh, factor very, very attractive. The second thing is, of course, we know it, we know it from many countries, this whole political factors that authoritarian, uh, authoritarian uh, uh, governments, 
the lack of uh, civil liberties, and uh, we know it from many countries also in the Middle East, the governments uh, which don't really uh, uh, allow the civil society and the political uh, society to participate in the uh, democratic uh, uh, processes, and uh, in that sense, the only opposition which has a kind of maneuver space for maneuver are the religious groups and we see that they are also very attractive for the for the uh, for some segments of the uh, society and of course um, as i said also the social factors are very very uh, important uh, drivers for uh, religious uh, groups and uh, thinking uh, to organize themselves and we see this in really in different countries happening and different societies happening in Africa, in Asia, in Middle East. We see this in different uh, places and not only Islamic but also other religions. Uh, we see that going on. Um, and interesting thing is uh, that you see at the same time a kind of parallel uh, trend, if you want, where uh, this. Uh, you see this, this, this growth in the influence, uh, influence of these uh, 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 religious groups and at the same time a huge impact on the debate and the discourse on human rights, especially women's rights. And uh, women's rights, uh, as we have seen it, for example, in the last decades, uh, were uh, very much part of the international uh, human rights debate from Cairo to uh, Beijing to uh, many, many others uh, actually international conventions and international agreements. I mean, the last, uh, if you see the CSWU discussion in New York the last time, was that Vatican, uh, Iran and a few other countries together they, were re they, ha they had a really very, very strong alliance and they wanted really, they, they were attacking already existing achievements in the uh, women's rights uh, that, that everybody actually already, you know, agreed upon that and we say this is part of actually international law if you want, at least international norms that we know and they were actually attacking that and they wanted to, uh, 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 you know, to weaken that. And there we, knew, we needed really the support of all the uh, women rights, uh, women's rights organizations and human rights organizations to stop them and to uh, actually try to, uh, to, to, to save what we have. Uh, even not to break us, but to save, because it was really a dangerous moment. So, um, the question, and I think it's really uh, important to talk about it here, is so, okay, what do we do about that as an organization like, uh, like Oxfam? And while I was listening actually to the contribution of uh, all the friends talking about the situation in Iran, I thought that is exactly the struggle of so many other women's groups and other organizations in the rest of the world. <coughs> what you see is that all of us are trying to change the laws because a lot of laws are against and they are uh, uh, um, uh, discriminatory. That's the one thing. You try really to change the laws. Secondly, you try, we try to change the practices because only changing the laws is not enough. As we say it in Dutch, paper is patient. You can have fantastic laws. We have some places in, in the world that have really fantastic uh, 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 um, uh, laws written and they have constitutions, great, very progressive. But if you go and see and uh, uh, look at what is going on in practice, and what's going on really in the society is, oh my God, you know, these laws, they are absolutely not translated in the, in the daily life of the, of the people. And the third thing, and I think this is really even more challenging and more difficult, and that was also the discussion actually in the previous sessions, challenging the attitudes, challenging the culture, challenging the beliefs, challenging uh, what is going on in the family, what is going on actually between men and women sitting uh, uh, really 
at the dinner table and making decisions. Uh, how to raise your child, what are the norms and values that you discuss and you actually practice at home level, at community level, at society level. And that part is really the, more, uh, the most difficult part, uh, part of it. I just wanted to give you some examples so that you can uh, see that what you have been doing in Iran uh, that it's going on actually in so many other places. One of the campaigns that we have is, for example, in Yemen on uh, um, uh, early age marriages. You know, 12, 13, 14 years uh, girls uh, 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 are actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, married. Uh, then you, are, you have early pregnancies, you have uh, health issues, you have the problem that they don't actually go to school. They are really, really a huge challenge and a huge problem. And if you tackle the law, then you know that you have a long, long way to go in a society, a very, very conservative society like Yemen, to change the practice and to change the belief of the father and mother knowing so I am not really doing the right thing for my child, so that they, are, they, they, they believe in it. So there's a really long way to go to that, uh, in that way. The second example is actually um, what I was talking about, my visit to Nigeria. Um, it's, it is a really a fantastic country, as I said. It has a kind of, you know, exercise a kind of democratic process. And if you look at what is the participation of women in that process, that is really, really very, very limited. I think even if you compare it with Iran, maybe in Iran you have more female parliamentarians than in the country, which is called a, a, a democratic country. And there you see that the whole system of politi political system has a lot of challenges for women to enter, this is the first thing, to be able to participate in the process. Thirdly, to actually stay in that process safe in a way that you can also uh, uh, protect your own values. So most of the time, if the women start to participate, then they think the only way that I can survive is to do the same thing that the men are doing, so that you get the same corrupt political maybe behavior that you have seen it also by men. So there again, what we do is uh, on the one hand support the women and women's groups to do really what they uh, believe in it, so to participate and to be part of the decision making process, and on the other hand really emphasize on that you shouldn't copy the same actually attitude and the behavior of men, but to challenge the system. And it is not easy. It is absolutely not easy. It is quite difficult. So my point is, and I would like to actually to conclude, my point is that we see really everywhere in the world a lot of challenges when it comes to the really position of women and women's rights. We see an increase in uh, a religious conservatism, we see a, a threat to what we thought was really actually achieved in, in, uh, for women's rights, and we see the struggle of different people, women's organizations, but also men participating in uh, human rights movements and uh, uh, women's rights uh, movements, and the struggles are very similar. And there the question is, are we able to connect all those together and really to build a movement which goes broader and behind the national borders and, nation and borders of the different societies? So thank you very much.